evening all. This is a live stream, tear down of a big clock. Uh, so I just need to check a few things first and see who's around. Uh, the first thing I need to do is see what my event's called. Big Clock Live. Well, that makes perfect sense. Hi, James. Hi, Mr. Furball. And hi, Thomas. Citadelic. John. Frugia. Tim Stoddard. Uh, oh, something that went off the screen a bit too quick. Rector Magnificus. Hi there. Paul, Mike, Mark, Chris, Wanaduino, and et al. So let's have a look um, at the top chat. Let's have a live chat. And I want to pull that out into a pop-out chat window, which I'll put on the left-hand side of my screen so that I can see it. Good, that should be everything we need. So, uh, yes, this live stream is a teardown of this clock. Hello from Gozo, John. Hi, John. How are you doing? You're in Gozo. Major envy. Major envy. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take this apart. It's a clock. Yeah, they are big. These are big numbers. Um, this was very kindly supplied by Banggood.com, so that's why that's there. And in the um, video that gets put on my channel after the live stream, uh, I'm going to put a link to this um, clock in the description below that video. I can't really put a link to it now. Um, I suppose we can try and find it sort of partway through the live stream. But anyway, let's get this thing open. It was, um, I was thinking it would be a bit bigger actually. I'll measure this uh, against my mat. I was thinking it might be about half a meter across. It clearly isn't. But uh, let's have a look. It does look like quite fun though. And what I'm particularly interested in, uh, in there there's some USB stuff. Oh I will need that won't I because, oh it's really long isn't it? So it's a really long USB lead. Hmm, interesting. Um, actually the camera, this thing here, which is actually a Doogee Mix phone, Jose, hi. Mai, how are you doing? Um, Mackie, Ian, sorry if I'm missing names, but I've got to uh, look away from the screen every now and again to concentrate on what I'm doing. What's that? Oh, that's a little battery. I'll probably need that. Um, yes, of course, that's going to keep uh, time while this thing is powered down. Yes, I'm powering this uh, phone from a power bank, so I can plug this into the same power bank because it's got to hi Chris, how are you doing? It's got two slots, so let's do that. And there it is. It's quite interesting. Keep up the excellent work, thanks, John. Doji Mix Two. Uh, I don't know whether it's a Doji Mix Two. Uh, I can't remember. I got it some time ago. I loved your computer breadboard build. Oh, thank you very much. Um. Yes, I don't know whether it's a Doogee Mix 2, but it's a Doogee Mix, that's all I know. Ah, now there's the place for the CR2032. I wonder if you have to have that. Nick. Ah, right. Thank you. Five US dollars. Thanks very much, Nick. And Nick says, hey -o, love your stuff. Thank you. Um, now, I did think uh, last time that I didn't really respond very well to the Super Chats, so I'll try and do that a bit more this time. I also thought that the Super Chats didn't came, come in the pop-up window, but they do. I can see it in the pop-up window on my screen, which is over there. Late arrival, is this a Banggood kit? Well, it's not a kit. It's just a product. It's a clock. And I thought it'd be quite fun to take it apart. I suppose we could switch it on first. Uh, so let's do that. I bought a few DIY clock kits from Banggood. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I'm not really a big fan of clocks, to be honest, but uh, this one just looked a bit unusual. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, oh, yes, this has got a fairly deep plunger sort of thing. The audio is being a bit weird for anyone else. Uh, don't know. David. Hi, David. 
Good to see you. Uh, I love you and your stuff. Oh, thank you very much. Right, now which way does this battery go in? Well, it's got to go that way, I guess. And then that just goes on there. That's it. And I'll lock it with my big screwdriver. So that should be it. Now, I don't think that's going to power the LED segments. The audio is OK. Audio is fine. Uh, John says here, uh, do you mean the audio is OK there? Uh, just looking back through the chat, can't see anything. OK, right, so let's um, power this up. So let's get this long lead, which will reach the power bank. Does anybody really know what time it is? Uh, well, in the UK, it's uh, 18.58, so it's just coming up to 7 o'clock. Uh, Mike Rhodes has just uh, donated $5, so thanks very much, Mike. Use this for more stuff. Can never have enough stuff. No, you can never have enough stuff. You're quite right. Right, let's plug this into the... Yeah, the 2032 will just keep the real-time clock ticking over. But then when it's powered up from 5 volts, which you'd imagine this would want to be powered up most of the time, um, then it's going to override that, I would imagine. You know, you've got two diodes, haven't you, so that the, the battery is going through one diode, the power supply is going through the other diode, and it would just kind of isolate that. I love your new PWM5 solar charge controller. Well, you can make one using the online resources. Uh, that's kind of a euphemism for I'm not going to be selling them because I did that once before and I don't really want to do it again. So let's plug this in. It goes in there. And, oh, yes, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Now, I would imagine... Uh, this says 0 0.00, 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 2, oh, that's um, temperature, isn't it? I think that was temperature. This is big, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so um, we're going to have one LED, I would imagine, per segment, and then there's some sort of light guide thing. I've got to set this now. How does one... That looks the duck's guts. Yeah, it does look a bit of fun, David. It does look... A bit of a laugh. The thing is, though, I don't really like particularly clocks that don't set themselves automatically. Um, my clock for my... Um, ah, Edwin Neuerlander has just donated €5.49. Euros Please do more Z80, ASM and Logic Electronics. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to do that. Oh, Adam's here. Hi, Adam. How are you doing? Um, yes, Edwin, I do want to do uh, more. Um, I don't know about Z80 ASM. I suppose we could. There is a way I can do it because, of course, I've got my old Z80 development system, which I've never shown for one reason or another. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm kind of buying clocks now that have MSF or the German one. Um, and, of course, phones and tablets and all that stuff, they all set their their clocks themselves. I don't really like this situation where you have to set the clock. It's a bit of a nuisance, but we've got to do it. So let's do it. Oh, God, it looks really hard. Integrated setting. Uh, was that 23 degrees C, but with a big gap in the middle? <laughs> yes, it probably is 23 degrees C, actually. My Thermometer says 25 degrees um, in the workshop and 27 outside. That's probably wrong because I know that the um, temperature sensor is actually in the sun. Use red or blue LEDs uh, for what, Mike? Uh, I wonder if you can replace with red or blue LEDs. Uh, yeah, you probably can replace with red. Uh, blue might be a little bit difficult. Uh, I mean, it might work. It depends how this thing's being driven, just simply because of the different uh, forward voltage. It's a dual colour clock. Oh, is it? Can I press a button and have a different colour? It's got an um, LDR, light-dependent resistor. Did that do anything? Yeah, I think it did, actually. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's gone dim in different stages. Let's put the, sun, the light on that again. Yeah, 23 degrees C. That's horrible with the big gap in the middle, isn't it? Oh, well. 
Well, I've got to say this now. Um, how do we set it? Press and hold three seconds set button until 12 hours or 24 hours flashes. OK, your focus is going places. Yeah, I mean, this phone's going to be constantly refocusing. Uh, and of course, with this being so bright, yes, it's going to play havoc with the exposure as well, isn't it? Nick NL, um, five euros. Thanks, Nick NL. I presume the NL bit is the Netherlands. Oh, no. <laughs> Greetings from France. Got that wrong. Hey, Julian, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Um, either yellow or white light. I don't know. I think this might be a single colour. Actually, let's look at the box. Oh, we've got white. Oh, that's interesting. White, white. Oh, that's probably the actual plastic. That looks like it probably says black. And the lights, the actual LEDs, are orange. So I've got a feeling they're just going to be um, orange LEDs in there. But we'll see that when we take it apart. Uh, so press and hold set for three seconds. Oh, and it beeps as well. That's good. 24 hour. Yeah, let's do 24 hour. Now, do you just oh, press and hold set? So I just press set. Oh, yeah. 004. That's the 04. 0101. That's probably the date. 0101. Yeah, that's the other part of the date. 2017. Oh, I can increment that because I know the month. 2018. What else have we got? 23 degrees C. Ah, oh, that'll be um, C and F. Well, I don't want F. F's no use to anyone. 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius. Hello from Germany. So it's got white, white. No, it's got a white plastic case, I think. I have the black version of my lens. light sensor. doesn't do anything. Oh, this one does. Cover up the LDR and it reduces brightness. Oh, hang on. I think it's not dark enough. There we are. It reduces brightness when it sees no light. Press the down button for a color change. I don't think this is going to color change unless, let's hang on, let's go back into this. So 24 hours, uh, that's hours, minutes, date, day, year, temperature Celsius or Fahrenheit, and that comes back out. So I don't think, yeah, who needs that Fahrenheit rubbish? Well, of course, we used to do Fahrenheit many years ago. Um, I actually remember Fahrenheit. Can you not lock your focus? Ooh, uh, hmm. Uh, let's have a look. Mute microphone. I don't know is the simple answer to that. It would be nice. Yes, it would be nice to lock that because it's bouncing around all over the place. It's quite annoying, isn't it? OK, I'll have a look at that. Um, but I'm using the YouTube app on this phone. And I don't really know it very well. There probably are some settings. Uh, what's that? I know, that's, it's done some updates. Right, forget that. Um, I'll have a look at that. If everyone starts saying it's absolutely awful, then I will have a look at it. Everyone probably will say that. But I don't know whether I can do that. There aren't many um, settings on here. Share, enable flash, mute microphone. That's about it. It's absolutely awful. It's very annoying. It's awful. It's bouncing around like crazy. Yeah, it probably is if you're looking on a big screen, because I'm looking on a little three-inch screen. The clock colon causes the focus to bounce. Oh, yeah, it probably does. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but I don't know how to set it. So if anyone knows in the YouTube app how to set, um, how to lock the focus, then please let me know. OK, so let's set the time, press and hold. I probably won't bother with the day and month. 24 hour, uh, oh, uh, what's the time? It's, uh, no, that's my live stream clock. It's uh, 19.07. OK, that's easy enough. 19, uh, set, and a couple of ups for 07. Uh, can't be bothered with the date and day. Uh, done the year. That's the temperature. That's it. There's the time, folks. Good for dramatic with the right music. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That's really it. And you do have to set it manually. Um, there are two little things here. That says PM. 
don't know whether these light up. I presume they do light up. And that's the alarm thing. Uh, actually, what I could do is if I go into set. Hi, Julian from Indiana. Hi there. Uh, let's go into set, press and hold. Let's go into the 12 hour clock. And just whiz through the rest of the. Oh, yeah, I saw it, I think. I think I saw it. Yeah. So there's the PM light. So there's just an orange LED behind that. Uh, right, let's have a look at the. Oh, now, one thing I was going to do was when I sort of switch to looking at the comments, because this will go a little bit sort of nothing happening, I was going to turn the camera around, which means you'll see, well, the ceiling initially, and then my ugly mug. So there we are. Uh, and now I'm going to read the comments. Uh, I can take my glasses off for that because they're for close up. Morning from sunny Arizona. How cheap does that plastic feel? Oh, not too bad. Uh, I think I want one. Yeah. Nice glasses. Yeah, they've got the um, they've got the diopter thing on there. So you can see that uh, these are plus two and a half. Or are they plus three and a half? Plus two and a half these. Oh, they're not my strongest ones. Hello. Did you get this big clock from Banggood? Yes, I did get it from Banggood, hence the um, thing on my desk, which I'm not going to switch to. As I'll switch back, won't it? Is this all a bit strange? Because I'm sitting over to one side and there's probably some um, barrel distortion and all that stuff, so my face is going to be all distorted. But let's go back. That's the first time you've seen my face. Yeah, it's probably a bit of a shock, isn't it? Um, yes, this did come from. That's what I was going to do. I was going to just going to show that, which is, uh, I read Big Clive instead of Big Clock Live. Yeah, that was subliminal. I did that deliberately. I thought people are going to mistake Big Clock Live for Big Clive, and I'll get more viewers. <laughs> Not really. Okay, let's put it back on me. Tip this down. Um, OK, so before we start, we take it apart. Let's just read some of these comments. Uh, what's that metal triangle thing behind you? Oh, uh, yeah, that's the um, Bluetooth speaker. That's that, uh, which I use sometimes. It just sits on top of that pile of envelopes. I use that sometimes um, for my audio uh, projects. Can you tell us about your engineering and programming background? Well, engineering, I was a field service engineer, which meant I got in the car, drove off to a another customer somewhere in the UK. Actually, my my range wasn't whole UK. It was southeast, including London. And we used to drive into London, which is mental. Well, you can't do it. I mean, it's mental now. It wasn't quite so bad then because there wasn't any congestion charge. Um, except Big Clive doesn't have near the engineering knowledge you have. Well... We have different knowledge. Uh, Big Clive, Clive is a um, an electrician. I'm not an electrician, so he, so he knows a lot about mains. I don't really know much about mains, and don't particularly like mains. Um, yeah, we just have different uh, skill sets. Hello from your favourite island, Malta. Oh, hi, Mad Book. Thanks for dropping in. Yes, that is my favourite island. Actually, my favourite island is the North Island, which is. Gozo, because it's a little bit quieter, a little bit greener. John's on Gozo. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I suppose, a bit less congested in terms of traffic. Because, of course, those two islands, without moving them around, fit inside the M25. Can you believe? So they're very small. Um, so, yes, it's quieter. Chaz likes Gozo. Excellent. Am I retired? Well, I suppose semi-retired. Uh, hi, Savvy Girl. Um, did you ever finish the supercapacitor Bluetooth speaker? No, not finished, but you know, that's a work in progress. I kind of got the capacitors, two of them in series. I just need to put um, uh, more in series and then hook up the amplifier. And But then the main thing is going to be working out a method for charging it. And also, do I want constant voltage or am I happy to let the capacitor voltage uh, drive the amplifier. Will this be available to view later? Yes, it will. Camino is much smaller and quieter. Yeah, but it's it's very quiet. I think there's only one hotel on Camino, isn't there? I don't. I think there's one family lives there or something, but 
not much going on there. Uh, watched the wedding. I did watch the wedding, actually. I thought that was quite moving. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, Adam Welch, I don't know how you'd get those islands inside the M35, N25, without moving them around. Yeah, they do. They both fit. Unless you intend to move the M25. No, no, they, they do fit. Um, if you sort of cut them out of a same scale map, you can slot them inside the M25. Uh, right, okay, so let's go back to the camera. Do you have a what? A bottle, rocket, and a plastic doll? Not today, no. All right, let's go back to my desk, tip that up. That's the view ahead of me. Uh, there's normally just junk lying around here, and these uh, glass cups, which I got from uh, Tesco, I think with all my screwdrivers and whatnot. Adam's joke was wasted on Julian. Oh, was it a joke? Oh, I missed that. Uh, how do you get them inside the internet? <laughs> yeah, okay, I think I get it. Right, so let's take this apart. Now, in true Julian style, I've got to do that with the power on because there's no fun in doing it with the power off. I need my glasses again. Uh, the prayers at the wedding were way too long. It was a long wedding. It was about an hour. All told, it did go on a bit. The I must admit, the edited highlights were um, a bit more interesting to watch. But you know, a wedding's a wedding, isn't it? You've got to have all that stuff about God, and you've got to have I do, and I I do, and I will, and all that stuff. I the wed, blah blah blah. Speaking without hearing any voices back and only reading text. Yeah, it is. It is a bit weird. I feel quite lonely. How many people are looking in? Oh, 413. On the phone here, I have three icons. Um, the first one is number of people, which is 417 now, 418. Uh, 63 thumbs up. Oh, I tell you what, could everyone click the thumbs up button? I'd like to see that number go completely ballistic 66 yeah 85 oh you see that's better isn't it it's going complete oh 138 thumbs up so you see you only have to say it and um it makes a huge difference now am i going to have a problem with this battery i probably am so let's take that out out it comes i mean it still work won't it 714 is that the correct time uh, uh, 1915 yeah do all thumbs up it helps it does help um, and for those people who do thumbs downs on the videos it's engagement so it doesn't really cause any problems so you're wasting your time doing thumbs downs because it just means that you have engaged you've sort of been part of the experience so I don't really mind the thumbs downs I always get half a dozen or something oh oh there we are it's a part Oh, that's nice. Ah, well, now we can see the way the uh, LEDs are no longer being light piped. Um, oh, now is this going to forget the time if I pull the plug? It is. But I'm going to have to pull the plug because I can't get the PCB. And the housing for the battery isn't going to work. Uh, 237 thumbs ups now. Yeah. Is it a holiday in the UK tomorrow, like in Canada? I don't know. Is it a bank holiday? <laughs> um, do we expect something super interesting inside this toy? No, not really. We're expecting lots of LEDs, lots of resistors. Um, I'm just wondering whether these LEDs are multiplexed. Actually, there's a quick way to find out. Oh, some of them are. Um, they don't... Wait a minute. No, they're all multiplexed. Oh, no. Ah, When I look on my phone screen... Of course, I'm seeing um, paths with gaps in them. I don't know whether you are as well. You may be. But actually, when I look live, um, the only LED that seems to be multiplexed is that one there, D33. What's that? Oh, that's, for that. that's interesting. There aren't any light pipes. They're just... Um, oh, there are 2.768 kilohertz crystal almost certainly what are they for so yeah lots of leds uh resistors one per pair of probably j 
jolly big microcontroller, no real time clock chip because you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. Um, why aren't I seeing the comments? Oh, I am now. Right, let's have a look at some comments. Oh, if I'm going to have a look at some comments. Oh, no, let me just finish this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm imagining they've taken a chip where they can drive each pair of LEDs from a separate pin. I assume that's what they're doing. Uh, right, what I'm going to do now is unplug this, which is going to, we're going to lose. Oh, actually, if I do it really quick, maybe capacitor will hold it. What time is that? Oh, yeah. It did, 717 look. Let me just put the um, thing back in front of it. Ah, that's interesting. What's this? Oh no, it's got um, a sort of uh, semi-translucent sheet there. So let's put that on there, 717. Yeah, this discussion has something like 90 messages in it. Oh, where is it? Oh, I'm going to have to go back through it. It's going to take a while, I think. Let's have a look. It's huge now. Uh, soldering on. Um, 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 some ideas. That's from me. Oh, okay. So there's the clock. It's HC28, I think. Let me just get the title up. Uh, right, the brand is Loski, L-O-S-K-I-I, H-C-28. Maybe I'll print that out, cut it out, and stick it on my desk. Maybe I won't. Um, if you want to know what it is... Oh, I've now blotted out my uh, live chat. Where's my live chat? There it is. Uh, Loski, L-O-S-K-I-I, it was. Someone's put a... Uh, Chris has put a link up to... A did you, which is probably very similar, um, it may not be this exact one, but anyway, there are several of this type. So, again, no, it isn't. Oh, it's that. Oh, that's weird. That's flashing on and off. Oh, it's also multiplexed at a higher rate. Why would they do that? I don't know. Um, yeah, just a single microcontroller, crystal, really very little support. Well, very little circuitry other than the microcontroller, LEDs and resistors, obviously. Three diodes, and that's probably something to do with um, the input thing. An NTC there. Look, oh, that's for the temperature, of course. The temperature sensor, just, um, let's bring that up, let's turn it around actually, uh, just below the light dependent resistor, it's interesting, I wonder why they put it there, why would they put the NTC so close to the LDR, I suppose you put it high up, but why right there, <laughs> just can't quite work that out, uh, LDR of course looking upwards to see ambient light, uh, Digio is cheaper for what looks like the same clock. Yeah, it's about eight pounds, isn't it, or something like that? Let's just have a quick look at the Banggood page. Um, oh no, fourteen pounds. Fourteen pounds thirty-nine. Where do I get eight pounds from? I don't know. Maybe the other one's eight pounds. Anyway, there it is. Right, let's go back to YouTube and my pop-out chat window. When you do the pop-out chat window. Uh, you lose the standard chat window. Nothing to see here, we popped out. Excellent. So yeah, just a microcontroller. Right, let's find out what this microcontroller is. Let's see if we can do the old, uh, run your fingers over the chip pin, see if the clock goes haywire. Well, no, it shouldn't do. Um, no, I mean, it's all gonna be low impedance. It's not gonna, you know, my finger's probably 100K um, unless I wet it. And then it might go too loudly, but no. Um, and I mean, most of these pins are going to be outputs. So they're driving CMOS hard from rail to rail, um, lighting up these LEDs. So no, nothing's going to happen unless I, I could put it across the clock, or the crystal, but... Oh, did that stop the... F oh, yeah, that did make it go a bit too loudly. No, 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 I think this is in auto uh, flick between time and date mode, isn't it? 
I think that's what it's doing. Yeah, that's 0101, so that's date, and that's the temperature, 25 degrees C. It is getting warm in here, actually. And I just put my fleece on because I thought it was going to be cold, but it isn't. It really not. So, um, yeah, there's not a lot to see, is there? And I wasn't expecting a lot. I just like the fact that they've done this all on uh, one large PCB, single-sided. We've got uh, the battery connections on the reverse, the buzzer, the uh, power socket, and three buttons facing upwards, some links, actually. So they couldn't quite lay it all out uh, on one side. Can we back illuminate this? Where's my torch? Oh yeah, look at the tracking. Fantastic. What is the microcontroller? Yeah, I'm stretching that one out. I'm stringing that one out, aren't I? We'll have a look at that in just a moment. I might need this torch actually for that. Uh, right, let's do it. Let's go into super duper macro mode. Do we need some light? Got to get the angle right. Got that clock crystal in the way. Got to get the focus right. Got to get reflections off. Yeah, this is pretty tricky. How do I do this? My um... See, normally I set all this up, you see. I stop the camera, I set all this up, and it all looks fabulous. It's a bit more tricky like this. Oh, hang on. I think I've got it. I need to clean this uh, magnifying glass, really, don't I? Let's do that. Bun cell from memory, yeah. I mean, that's so that you can uh, unplug the 5-volt USB. This is you at the other end for anyone who didn't see that at the beginning. Just cleaning the magnifying magnifying glass. Uh, clock idea stolen. Oh, what's that? USB charging. No, it's not USB charging. Um, it's just uh, USB powered and it will only light the segments if you've got the USB power. And then the battery presumably is just to keep the um, time if you need to disconnect the USB or perhaps your power bank switches itself off or something. Clock idea stolen from Fran. Really, was it? Did Fran do one of these? Um, if she did, I haven't seen that video and I do watch most of her stuff. All right, what we got? Aha! There we go. It's an ELAN. So it's going to be some sort of microcontroller. I've not heard of ELAN. EM88F. Ah, our super chat. Someone said, what the heck is a <laughs> super chat? Yes, that's a super chat. Um, R. Larson has donated 20 Norwegian kroner. I don't know how much that is, I'm afraid, but thank you very much. What the heck is Super Chat testing one, two? Well, there you are. Uh, so, yes, EM88F758NL44S. 70, Never heard of it. It's going to be, um, you know, just a low cost microcontroller to get the bill of materials cost down to a minute. No, it's not an AT328. Um, most sort of Products that are ripoffs of projects, I suppose you can expect to be AT Mega 328, but things that are sort of designed from the ground up uh, by a design house, they'll tend to just go for whatever's cheapest. Um, yeah, so that's it. And these are single color LEDs. You can see that uh, they're not going to. Jose says, Will you be buying a 3D printer? Yeah, let's go to the. Um, other camera now. Uh, so yeah, these aren't going to be able to switch colors. I think there are versions of this clock which have multicolor LEDs. 8-bit microcontroller, that doesn't surprise me, uh, just a basic. I mean, the thing's running really slow. There's no other crystal. Actually, yeah, maybe it's looking at the crystal on um, a couple of inputs. Maybe it's not being clocked by that. I suppose it could be clocked by that, but it's probably running an internal uh, multi-megahertz clock. And then it's just using that on uh, probably on a, a, a capture compare type input so that it can uh, just keep real time. I don't know. Focus is going to do that again. If I change camera, that won't happen. So let's do that. 
Uh, yeah, you're going to have to look at my ugly mug now. Let's take my glasses off. I can't actually see my own face because the um, text is running up the screen. Actually, the camera's over this side. Yeah, the camera's over on this side. This phone's interesting. It's got the camera at the bottom of the phone. And it says, um, if you want to do, I don't know, uh, some chat stuff, turn the phone upside down, which is quite interesting. I think it's because the Doogee Mix is supposed to be sort of edge to edge on three sides. It's not really edge to edge. Oh, I wonder if I could show that. No, that would be really hard. Actually, no, that might be quite easy. Uh, with a mirror. Now, have I got a mirror? Anyway, let's not bother with that. Let's read some comments. Uh, shave live on stream. I have shaved. It was a few days ago, but I only shave about once a fortnight. Actually, what I do is I let it grow until it just gets so irritating I can't stand it anymore. And then... Uh, and then I'll shave really because I have to rather than because I want to. Um, what's that in farthings? Four times as much as it is in old pennies. Um, I was asked before, but you missed it. Are you going to do any more work on the Muppet? And what are your future plans for it? Muppet 2, yes, is a current project. In fact, um, hang on, let me just check if I can lower the camera to this point. Yes, I think I can. Let's bring that down. There are my project boxes. You see the eight um, boxes there. And Muppet 2 is one of them. I don't know whether you can see it, but that's Muppet 2 there. So that's a current project. We've got Supercapacitor Speaker. Uh, Breadboard Computer, yeah, that's there. Where is it? Oh, 8-bit Computer, that's that one. Um, what have we got? Vocoder. Something I've called Lithium-Ion Plus Ammeters, but I'm not planning to carry on with that. Penny organ. And this one's just got stuff I'd swept off my desk. So I just got so cross with the rubbish on my desk, I just swept it into that box. Uh, so it's not really a project. So there are, I've got seven projects on the go uh, currently. Let's get central. There we are. How's that? No Z80. No, Z80 is not really a project. Um, the trouble with the Z80 is that programming it is difficult. My Z80 development system, you know, you need a keyboard, you need a monitor, you need a ROM, you need a RAM. It had numerous cards. It had a printer card, a cassette tape interface card. Uh, it had a floppy disk card. I spent far too much of my life writing floppy disk routines. Um, it just had so many cards. The electric bike, yes, I looked at the electric bike today because I was just in the shed briefly. Have you seen the LED matrix displays I've been playing with on my channel? They're fantastic. Brian Luff has done some great coding. Are those the um, LED matrix? Oh yes, I did see that. I think is it something like um, 32 by 64 or something like that? They did look very good and they're edge to edge, aren't they? So that you can um, edge mount them. The Z80 is a beast in its own right. Well, it is, but it needs such a lot of support stuff. My desk sweepings boxes on the floor behind the desk. That's the one. Yeah, I got some of that. And I can never get behind this desk or not very easily. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of support stuff you need for the Z80. And, you know, if I laid out my Z80 development system, uh, it would take up the, this entire desk. And th this desk is really all I've got in terms of space. The whole of the rest of the room, as you can see, uh, that wall is entirely covered. I'm, I'm moving my finger around the screen. Um, that wall is entirely covered. Greetings from Cyprus. Oh, I bet it's nice and warm there. What's happening with the breadboard computer? Yeah, well, I mean, I want to get back to that. The uh, ALU was the latest thing. So I want to get back to the ALU. Nice picture of sunshine there in your message. I like that. Still not as bad as the 8080. No, that's true. I think the 8080 needed three voltages, didn't it? Whereas the Z80 was five volts only. Uh, will the Muppet Gumstick, Muppet Gumstick, no, PWM5 Gumstick is uh, my open source charge controller. Gerber files and firmware be open source. Yeah, they are open source. Uh, they're available now. I pinned, oh no, I don't think I could pin. No, you can't pin a post to the top of uh, Patreon. Actually, what I could do is go to Patreon. Let me try and do that. No, I don't know how long that's going to take. It may not take too long. 
uh, go to ooh, where is it dashboard and um, I'll just change the date on that post did you ever do anything with the 6502 no only argue with my college mate uh, who was into 6502 I was into Z80 so we just argued about that silly it's the Mac PC argument it's the pick AVR argument it's pointless nonsense um, so let me go to posts and I'll put that post at the top um, it's now what's it called it's called uh, PWM5 resources so yeah let's just edit that change the date oh I could look at the date on my clock but I didn't set it so Intel 4004 would be a challenge um, yeah that needs RAM there's probably multiple um, voltage levels I don't know how much RAM it could take probably hasn't got a very big address bus uh, right so uh, mm, can I change the date? I don't know whether I can change the date actually no I got a feeling there was nothing I could do with this which is really silly there really needs to be a pin thing um, I don't know whether I can... Oh, I can put a message in, can't I? Yeah, okay. All right, let's go back. Dashboard. I'll put it in as a URL. Uh, in that which case, I might as well put in the um, clock as a URL as well. So let's do that. Uh, yeah, so that's the copy. Go to my pop-out chat. Yeah, I can say something. Of course I can. I can talk in my own chat, can't I? Control-V. Right, that's the URL for the clock, uh, if you want to go to that. And I'll put the URL for the ooh, posts. Um, yeah, for the link to the PWM5 resources. I sent you a message uh, 10 months ago about supercapacitors. I'm sure it would make a very interesting video. Yeah, I don't know what uh, the message was about, though. Right, posts. No, I don't want to go to that. I just want to go to my standard page. This will be appearing at some point. Uh, Supercat based spot welder. Yeah, that could work. Actually, the simplest um, 18650 spot welder I saw was just a 12 volt lead acid battery. Uh, and that just seemed logical to me. You don't really need current control and all that stuff. Just Get your 12 volt lead acid battery, shove it on for a couple of seconds. It all gets very hot. Good enough. All right, let's have a look down here. Yeah, I'm going to have to um, copy this post and then place it back at the top. If you're watching Jack Conti, which you probably aren't, he's the um, CEO of Patreon. Please, can you make posts sticky so that you can put them at the top? because there doesn't seem to be any means to make them sticky. And that's really silly. Right, so that's it. Let's copy that. Paste it into my chat window. Control V. And there we are. That's where you'll find um, three links to the firmware, the, and, uh, the schematic and the PCB layout uh, on Easy EDA. That's it. Shove it on and watch it explode in your face. Shove what on? Oh, I see. Um, using a 12 volt battery for a spot welder. It's not going to though, is it? There's enough resistance in the cables, probably. Uh, if you use lithium batteries instead, it's far more meta. Uh, I thought about making a tiny clock with Arduino-ish board. Well, you can buy shields with uh, real-time clocks. And you can buy shields with um, uh, seven segment LEDs and all that sort of stuff. I, I did a clock actually a while ago on an Arduino Leonardo, which is a nightmare thing, using one of those LCDs. What was it called? The Nokia 5110 or something. I can't remember. Have I closed my 256 website? No, but the servers don't run currently because someone hacked my servers. And I just thought, okay, they don't work then. If, um, if you're going to hack my servers, then there will be no servers. Um, it was some sort of exploit that was put on the server, and then the server started 
pestering some forex exchange website they then contacted my isp and they said i should look at the camera no they said um uh you're sending out all these funny requests and so i just shut them down because i can't fix uh linux i don't know how to do that and to be honest um i i think i now want to put my uh, resources on things which someone else is looking after the servers like um facebook patreon they're all places where you can put posts and i'll put links to um uh haste bin for the firmware and probably easy eda for the so uh, the pcb stuff put it on gitlab uh yeah it's probably better to put i mean people have said put it all on github and you know that's there's a big learning curve on github and um i've got learning curves in other areas which are higher priority so i probably don't want to go through the learning curve of github facebook's not ideal but i mean i can put links there github is amazing and simple well, it doesn't strike me as being terribly simple it seemed rather difficult to me uh out of curiosity what do you think of the apollo moon landing program it was a long time ago do you mean all this um Conspiracy theory stuff. I don't do conspiracy theory. Seems pretty convincing that, uh, and you know, let's face it, it's hard to get to the moon. It's not that hard, is it? The maths is pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's in three dimensions and whatever. Are you getting some sunshine today? Yeah, yeah. It was it was um, beautiful today and quite warm. No, not conspiracy. Oh uh, well, in that case, I think it was very impressive. For the technology at the time, I mean, uh, you know, if we had technology like this at that time, then of course it could probably all have been done in a in a little microcontroller like that, which is uh, pretty ridiculous, really. What's the time? Seven thirty-eight. Oh, that seems to be losing time because uh, my computer says nineteen forty-one. So what have I done? I don't think this is tunable. There's no variable capacitor. Um, so was it me? Did I? Was it when I touched the chip that it lost a bit of time? I don't know. But it's certainly not quite right. 24 degrees C. What was the time again? 7.38. Oh, well, I'll have to change that. So set. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. 12 hours. That's right. Set. 7, 38, plus, plus, plus. Oh, I've gone too far. Minus. Oh, it's got plus and minus buttons. That's good. Unlike the clock in my car, where it can only go up, it can't go down. So that's quite annoying. Um, yeah. Back to the comments. So that's... I suppose that, that is something on the display, but no, that's me. I, I shouldn't be shy, camera shy. So let's just put that on there. I just don't appear in my videos much because I just don't figure that I'm very relevant. It's what I'm doing that's relevant, really. That is until I start up my vlog. Um, any new about the Opto Isolator contraption? Haven't done Opto Isolator since I did the Opto Isolator ring oscillator, which was fun. Uh, that's somewhere around. Um, and the ring oscillator, the clock probably stopped running when you had the power disconnected. Oh, I did have the power disconnected for a brief time. But it wasn't very long. But I didn't have the backup battery in there, so maybe it um, was... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I only unplugged it for about five seconds because the point was I thought that it might lose time, and so I wanted to unplug it for a, as little time as I could. Is there an electrolytic on here? No. Are there any capacitors on here, actually? Nothing big, so they're not using much in the way of... Um, bypass capacitors or what I would call uh, what do I call them decoupling capacitors I suppose uh, right um, yeah an internet discussion uh, about yes you did rather about the Apollo thing yeah I mean it's interesting when you look back at it I mean I, I love watching it I that's probably the only collection of um, 
VHS videos I've got are old Apollo moon landing programs, Horizon Equinox, those sorts of um, documentaries. I just found them incredibly fascinating. Uh, do you know John Main's pick series? I don't. No, I've not seen that. How about more solar projects now the weather is better? Yeah, you see, that's, in theory, that's that makes perfect sense. But by the time I've kind of thought about it, uh, Vercoda message there, I'll come back to that. Um, the weather's gone. You know, we only have two months. So we'll wait, we'll wait for the, the Mediterranean workshop for, uh, for the solar stuff. Uh, hi, Julian. Have had time to do any more with the ETI Vercoda project? Well, no, I haven't done any recently, but um, it is a current project and I do want to do stuff on the vocoder because uh, I was thinking actually um, the next PCB I make, well, the next one, you definitely need a med workshop. I do, John. You're quite right. And the next video is going to be the little um, micro gum stick uh, power uh, PWM charge controller. And then after that, I was thinking I might for the next PCB do a modular vocoder where each of the channels is on its own board. I'm not quite sure how that would work yet. Uh, oh, you're also building the ETI Powertrain vocoder. I'm looking forward to your next video about it. Yeah, I, I, I want to get back to it. Um, I suppose my still using the foot pump. No, the foot pump. <laughs> the foot pump was a total failure. Uh, it is in a box, which is really stupid because I should chuck it out because it wasn't to say it wasn't really a serious video that. It was uh, it was just a bit of fun uh, trying to force that foot pump to do f approximately 50 psi. That was never going to happen. But I do have a solution um, to that. Now the only problem is uh, I think the solder paste has dried up because I put silica gel in it, and uh, silica gel is hygroscopic. Now I didn't do it as a joke, but it was. A bit silly it was never going to work i think the silica gel has uh absorbed all of the solvent in the um solder paste and also i need to buy a bulk pack of um <laughs> the solder paste video was awesome well there were several yeah they were fun me just larking about um yeah i need to buy a bulk pack of the nozzle that i ended up using which was not one of the metal pipe ones it was one of the um sort of uh, sort of conical shaped ones with a tiny hole in the top, all plastic. That one seemed to work quite well. Uh, okay, asking about PCB design software. Yeah, well, I'm biased there, so I can't really answer that. So I'll leave that uh, to be answered by other people because I, I like easy EDA um, despite the uh, JLC PCB connection. I actually like it anyway because I can't quite like working online uh, I've been using the same nozzle for two years. Yeah, so maybe it's not the nozzle, <laughs> maybe it's the solder paste that has just uh, lost its, um, the opposite of viscosity, whatever that is, runniness. Uh, okay, right, um, so perhaps I should reassemble this clock. Let's go back to the clock. 47 minutes, so, oh no, 54 minutes I've been running. Oh, well. So how do we reassemble this clock? Mm, well, we need this bit. Um, there's nothing in... Oh, no, oh, no there's, a, there's also um, a sort of a, ooh, translucent, completely transparent, I suppose you'd say. Transparent means you can see through it, doesn't it? And translucent means light can go through it. So the semi-opaque thing, I suppose, is translucent. Now, does that fit there? Yep, yeah, seems to. Uh, and that's got the little legends for the alarm and PM indicator. What are people talking about? Easy DA, uh, nozzles, isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, I could drop some of that in. Uh, you need adhesive tape. I don't know if I just assemble this upside down, probably be all right. And then this thing probably goes in next. Is it that way? Yeah, that's it. PCB goes on next. Is it that way? Yes, that looks like it. Oh, I 
Oh, now the buttons. Which way around would those springy bits go? Hmm. I suppose. It, oh no, that's. Uh, oh no, it's going to be defined by the set button, so it's got to go that way. That looks about right. The bottoms. Please show us your workshop. Uh, yeah, it's difficult that because there are sort of personal things lying everywhere. Um, so you've got to be a bit careful. But I'm. I showed you know behind me, which is like most of the shelving uh and really i mean the workshop is just shelving there's a window shelving more shelving a door there's two doors actually because this is a, a through room um a wall with my youtube um uh little wall plaque thing another bit of shelving my computer desk and that's it that's pretty much it uh dust julian dust dust what do you mean dust I don't know. Oh, do some dusting, you mean? Yeah, I probably should do some dusting. Uh, Julian, have post it with passwords on. Passwords. Uh, what can I say about passwords? I use a password manager um, because I can't remember them all. So, yeah, I, I've come to the point where I need to use a password manager, uh, which I think does a very good job. Right, uh, I'm going to have to unplug this, aren't I? Let's see if I can do it quickly. Pop that on there. Plug that back in. I forgot about that. Almost. Did it retain the time? Oh, it did! 7.49 p.m. Excellent. Uh, why won't that go back? Oh, I think it's because that's pushing it. Does that come off, actually? It probably does once you've opened the housing. Right, I'm just going to hold it up a little bit on one side. Pop the screws back in. So it was a, what was it, an E-something microcontroller? Um, a crystal. We didn't ha actually have a look at the frequency of the crystal, but it's almost certainly going to be 32.768 kilohertz. In other words, 32768 um, hertz which when you divide goes down to 16384819240096 there's a familiar number 256 uh, 12864 and so on i'm just showing off that i know the big numbers because i learned them all when i was doing z80 programming all the higher order 2 to the power of numbers um, I assume these screws are all the same. Uh, right, password manager. I'll have to go to Canada. <laughs> Why? I must have missed something. Waiting for your upcoming coming Muppet videos. That's my favourite project. Yeah, I want to get back into the Muppet 2. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is um, synchronous buck converter with two MOSFETs. So I'm going to have to build another MOSFET driver. I'm going to carry on using my um we are all show offs yeah we are carry on using my um opto isolator mosfet driver um not sure quite why i quite like it i'm quite proud of it really it doesn't seem to have been done by anyone else before um but it's also simple and it uses very low cost components which is what i like about it i could use an off the shelf uh, mosfet driver i've been watching other people's videos about which MOSFET driver to use. So if, it, if I need to raise the frequency, but I think I can probably do the whole series with a low frequency. Uh, and that's it. So there's the clock. Uh, oh, let's put the battery in. And then we'll unplug it for a while and see if the battery does its thighing. Battery. So 751, let's unplug it and leave it off for a minute or two. See if the battery works. Come back to the workshop. There's the workshop. It is just all shelving. I just covered the walls in shelving. Uh, the NTC is there because that's where there's a hole in the case. Yeah, but then you'd think, wouldn't you, that any heat generated internally might be tempted to flow up through that hole Nah. Who's that old guy? 
Yeah, I wonder who that is. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't, just don't know why it's there. It's just, it could have been anywhere, really. Um, not near anything that gets warm. There's not going to be anything that gets warm in here. Just didn't know quite why it was quite so close to the... Um, the... Uh, the LDR. Right. So let's have a look. Uh, I've been going for one hour and one minute, so we'll keep going for a little bit more. If you need more shelving space, my workshop has plenty of space for your gear. <laughs> yeah, where's that, though? Where is that? How old are you, actually? Um, 50, I was born in 61, February, so it's now 18, so I must be 57. Yeah. Do you prefer coffee or tea? I don't drink either coffee or tea. I don't really like hot drinks, um, which is probably why I have such a problem feeling the cold in the winter, because hot drinks warm you up, don't they? Really stupid. I started drinking hot water for a while, but I don't really like hot water. Actually, I should have some water. Right? Don't drink any water. Um, I have a garage you can use in Australia. OK, thanks for that. Next post bag. Actually, I haven't done one for a while, have I? Yeah, there's masses of post in that bin down there. So, yeah, I must do that. Psychosomatic reaction. And I'm 21 years old. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice. Um, what's that triangular thing behind you? Someone's already asked that. I've dealt with that. Watch the video back when it goes up off this. After this, since we're off topic, Malta Zero Vision entry was awesome. I didn't see it because weren't they knocked out in the um, semi-finals? I only watched the final. Yeah, but didn't make the final. Um, I I don't know what to say about Eurovision. I really don't. I, I'm not sure we should bother anymore. It's just so pointless. And we're universally hated, the UK. Um, it started back in uh, Tony Blair, the Tony Blair era. And now Brexit, probably. <laughs> we're probably hated for Brexit. So... Um, not that I have, uh, not that I support Brexit at all. I'm quite the opposite. I mean, you know, if I want to spend time in, um, we were bullied. We are bloody bullied. Uh, yeah, if I want to spend time in Malta, then why would I support Brexit? I, I just would not. Um, right, let's have a look. Workshop tour, workshop tour. Okay, workshop tour, let's do a mini workshop tour. I have a pan thing on here. Can I pan left and right? Yeah, it should be okay to pan left and right. Workshop tour. Shelves. Oh, there's a solar panel on the wall there. Instead of a picture, um, I like to have a solar panel because, well, who needs a picture? And then the shelves go up to that end, and there's a door. And then the shelves go up to that end. And there's rubbish there. Oh, I'm not sure what's on that shelf. Oh, just rubbish. It's all rubbish, you see. And then there's another door there, which is actually a shower room. That's the workshop tour. Done. My Lovely Horse was the best Eurovision winner. Was that this year or previous years? I like the really old stuff. In fact, am I retired yet? Um, semi. Semi-retired. I have a small pension. But actually, uh, I rely on my um, YouTube activities for most of my income. The pension's not that big. Um, yeah, my favourite um, Eurovision song of all time is Poupée de Cire, Poupée de Son. I love that song. And it was only about one and a half minutes long, which helps. Songs are too long. They should be much shorter. 30 seconds. That's all you need. Uh, there's a funny effect where more and more shelving leads to more and more need to put ever larger stocks of stuff into. I know, but the main problem is I don't throw anything away. I did have this sort of um, idea that I might employ someone on a part-time basis to eBay a lot of it because I can't move. I've got the storage unit, but, you know, it's three miles away. I've got a Poupé de Cire, brilliant, hypercute song. Yeah, it was really, it was a really neat song. Uh, and we, uh, we had a, a vinyl best of Eurovision album uh, on 12 inch vinyl, 33 RPM. Uh, and it dates back from the late 60s, I think, or maybe the early 70s. 
and I just learned all the songs off by heart, and that was my favourite song on that record. Uh, <clears throat> how do you categorise or find anything on the shelves when it's becoming increasingly difficult? It's it's all in here, but it doesn't work very well. You need an apprentice to help you. Yeah, I think I kind of do. You and Big Clive should do a live show together. Yeah, the question is where? Um, and we're quite different people, actually. Uh, I'm not an electrician by trade. He is. He tends to do a lot of sort of electrician type main stuff. I don't do mains at all. So it would be a mix. If... The only other way to do something like that would be a collaboration where we shoot um, separate chunks of video and then just intercut them. But we talked about it a long time ago. But um, we did the live, uh, not the live, we did the um, collaboration on the little LED panel that he made and I assembled. Uh, when you throw something away, you'll find you suddenly, yeah, well, that's the problem. You know, you make a decision to throw something away. It's not so bad if you eBay, I found. Uh, if you throw something away, you then think, damn it, I need that now. I wish I hadn't thrown it away. But if you sell it and you get a couple of quid for it, then it, it doesn't feel so bad. You kind of think, uh, I'm going to look at the camera now. So I'm looking at you. There you are. You're there. Um, it doesn't feel so bad. And you just think, uh, OK, well, I sold it. I've got some money and that's the end of it. I'll buy another one if necessary. Uh, what is your trade? Well, my trade now is uh, semi-retired, probably a quarter retired and three quarters YouTuber. It's a trade. Do you know JW? No, I don't actually. John, oh, I don't remember his surname because he calls himself JW now, so I know him as JW. John Ward, that's right, yeah. No, I don't. He's he's a southerner, obviously, so he can't live a million miles away, but... Uh, um, HQ Air, where's HQ Air? I don't know. If your viewers funded a trip to China, would you go? I don't know. I'm not really very keen on the idea of sitting on an aeroplane for however long it takes to ch get to China. It's got to be. I mean, I did it a long time ago. I went to China, went to Hong Kong, went to Singapore, Kuala Lumpur. I, I did a lot of travel around the Far East um, with my job. And at that time, I, I was OK, you know, sitting on a plane for 14 hours or whatever it was. But I just don't think I fancy it now. It's a long time sat in a seat, unable to move around much. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe not. I'll ask China person to come over here. Are you going in the EMP Tom pick one time, Julian? <laughs> I don't know because I don't know what it is. You totally should go to Shenzhen. Yeah, I mean, these days it's interesting how the limerick's getting on, yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't go anywhere in order just to see it because you can see these places in HD resolution. Oh, that's a good question. What's the future in electronics? Um, you can see these places in HD resolution, and I think kind of that's good enough. So I wouldn't do it as a tourist. But, you know, if I needed to go there um, for a meeting or something, I'd, I'd be very disinclined to do it. It's a long way. Perhaps I'd suggest we met in Malta. That'd be the answer. Meet in Malta. You're in the wrong part of the world for solar panels. Yeah, rubbish for solar panels here. Uh, I mean, you know, they, the, the last few days they would have worked well, but... Not in the winter, hopeless. Huge market in Shenzhen for all sorts of electronic things. Well, of course, yeah. Yeah. The future of electronics is AliExpress Banggood. I suppose really the question could be interpreted as what's the future of hobby electronics? Um, now I've got to think of an answer. <laughs> what's the future of hobby electronics? What I really would like to see actually is, is something like Arduino, something with the simplicity of Arduino, but something new. Uh, I just want to see something new. A microchip should, um, should come out with something. But Arduino just got such an incredible foothold that no one else got a look in 
did they? I mean, I know there are other boards out there, like the ESPs and stuff like that. Are you going to do a tour of your, your workroom? I just did a tour. You missed the tour. It wasn't a full 360, but it was uh, about 120 degrees, I suppose. Arduino have announced an FPGA board. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. What do you think about Mapling closing? I think it's a real shame, actually. Although I very rarely bought anything from them because it was so expensive. But if you just need something in a massive hurry, uh, you could you could uh, just run down to Maplin if you could park, that is. Actually, where there's, where's there's a Maplin where you can park? Yeah, there is one. Maidenhead, I think. Yeah, you can park outside Maplin Maidenhead. But they're probably gone now. Yeah, they were selling... Well, I mean, all the products are Chinese. And they were selling Chinese products at a premium price. And they had to because... They had um, expensive, um, uh, you know, if you've got 200 stores, I don't know whether they own the stores or were leasing them, but that's costly. Business rates and all that sort of stuff. Maplin here had a massive car park. Where's that then? Oh, your name is Dundee Road, so presumably in Dundee. Uh, the FPGA Arduino board is coming out next month. I might look at that, actually. I quite like the idea of playing with FPGAs because it's, it's basically logic done on a computer screen. I quite like the physical aspects of electronics. I don't want to do every, all my electronics on a computer screen. I think that's terribly dull. But um, that could be quite fun. If it's, it's a little baby FPGA, I think that'd be quite fun. Right, so, um, clock. oh, I've got to power the clock back up. Let's power the clock back up. So, uh, let's switch the camera. I presume this camera switching is pretty seamless. Uh, and that uh, you don't see any sort of video disruption. You just see a nice, clean shot change. So, that, it actually works quite well. I do like using this phone, because it means that I don't have to buy a new PC and use OBS or whatever. 751. <laughs> well, that didn't hold time very well. That's interesting, isn't it? I wonder if there's a problem with that battery backup thing. In which case, it doesn't really do anything, does it? If the battery backup doesn't keep good time, then there's not much point having a battery backup. Interesting. Read the comments on this on Banggood's website to see whether people have said anything about uh, timekeeping. And there's no twiddly... Um, uh, what's it called? Variable capacitor in here to sort of trim that. Um, what's it called? Crystal. Yeah, trim the crystal. So it held the time. It just didn't advance it. Yeah, but <laughs> what's the point of that? Yes, actually, that's interesting, isn't it? Because that battery. Yeah. I wonder if the um, microcontroller can maintain the bit of hardware that's doing the crystal um, using that battery at very low current it would have to be. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. How would I do it if I was writing the software for that? You'd have to have that, um, you'd have to shut down most of the CPU and then only run the essential parts that were maintaining the time. Yeah, I don't know how they do that. I'm not even sure whether it works particularly well. Anyway, there we are. I wanted to show you this clock in all its glory. Uh, and we've seen it, haven't we? We've seen the internals, uh, microcontroller, not much else, crystal. And that's it. Well, I'm going to call it a day or an evening, I think. Um, sorry, guys, if you're having a chat. Actually, I think you can carry on chatting after the stream stops. But I'm done. I've done the... Um, did anyone see Photonic Induction's heartbreaking vid? Yes, I did. And actually, um, I've got an update on that. Photonic is evidently OK. Um, uh, yes. Let me just say, we had a chat with him. And um, I don't quite understand the video and the gloominess of it. He seemed in better spirits during that conversation. So I don't think he's. Uh, we need to worry too much about Photonic, but he's very, um, he's totally fed up with the fact that he can't get his wife to live in this country. Uh, and you can understand that, so it's understandable. 
and I think he has been very, um, you know, upset, depressed. But um, we understand that he's not about to do anything crazy. That's my reading of it anyway. Um, so, OK, so let's end the stream. Uh, that was the clock. That's that one done. I've got a few more things from Banggood, actually. So they'll appear probably in uh, non-live videos. Uh, can I give any clues? Oh, I've got a new battery charger I'm on my search for the ultimate uh, battery charger that can charge both AA uh, nickel metal hydrides and lithiums. And unlike the ISDT battery charger, that can do the, the slightly longer lithiums, the protected ones. So still looking for the ultimate um, battery charges. That, that, that will appear in due course. OK, folks, well, thank you, all 436 of you, for joining me. Um, it's been fun. I'll try and do more of these live streams um, because I quite enjoy them. Uh, but uh, the next one will probably be just a regular video. So how do you end a live stream on here? That's the question that we always ask, isn't it? And I don't know. Let me just click the screen. No, that didn't do anything. I don't know how to end a live stream. Perhaps I'll do, oh, hang on, there's an X. Yeah, I'll press the X. Okay, live stream, bye-bye. <laughs>